All right, you're trying to figure out what kind of shifter is best for your Camaro. Uh, you just bought that uh, fifth gen, you love it so far, but you don't like the shifter. It feels a little mushy, it feels like you're moving a big piece of plastic around. You're not sure what gear you're in, but back in the day, maybe uh, you had an older Camaro. If you had a first gen like this one over here, um, well, that Hurst shifter was just fantastic, right? Um, it was spring-loaded. It was a side-loader transmission you would have had, probably a Muncie or Borg Warner or something like that, maybe a Saginaw, and you enjoyed it. But now that you got your new Camaro, you're thinking, geez, the car's great. It's modern. It's fun. It's got the retro look, but the shifter, not so much. So I'm going to give you a lot of uh, information here in this video on how to make a good choice. We're going to start off with that stock shifter. So this is the stock shifter that I took out of my orange car here. Um, this one here, I'm gonna have some measurements for you here too. The overall length of it is eight and a half. That's from the top to the center line of where the clevis pin would be right here. And then the other measurement I took is an inch, which is really in reference to the retainer plate to the center line of the hole where that clevis pin would go through. So if you look at some of the different shifters out there, uh, GM has a short throw which is great. You're like, oh wow, GM made a short throw. Let's just do that. And you buy the whole assembly, you get everything with it. All you really need is the shifter um, lever arm itself. You can swap that into uh, your original assembly. This one here is about the same on the length, um, but now the bottom measurement changes just a little bit, okay? As we change uh, how that lever arm is gonna be connected. And this is the arm that would connect directly on the very bottom down here, um, going up forward on the top of your Tremec TR6060, okay? Um, well, what about the Hurst, right? They were good back in the day, and that's what you really liked. Well, here's the deal. I, I think that uh, it's just a, a simple replacement. Again, it's the arm. They did some nice things here as far as tightening up the bottom of it um, into the housing, but the overall length is a little bit longer, um, and you really see a big jump on the very bottom side of it here as far as the distance uh, here. That really changes the throw. Um, it's close, it's mechanical, it feels great, but I think they got a little too greedy because I've had some issues with this shifter causing the transmission to grind. So um, I know Barton is very similar to the Hurst, and I've read online where a lot of people have had grinding issues. Get that thing out of there. It is so much less expensive to buy a shifter uh, than a transmission. Um, so how did this one feel in the car? Well, I liked it. Um, it had a mechanical feel. I didn't have any grinding issues with this particular shifter. Um, but the thing I didn't like is it didn't have a real positive feel as far as what gear you're in. So if you were at the drag strip and you're out there in second gear and you're trying to grab third gear, you're kind of like, well, I think I got third. Maybe I grabbed first. Maybe I got fifth. Huh. Well, the bad news is, is you're going to mechanically over rev that engine if you just went from second gear back into first. So, yeah, the rev limiter is great when you're under heavy load going into a higher gear, um, but you can mechanically over rev it if you miss a gear and you grab a lower one. So when I was doing some testing with all these shifters, I did not want to hurt my engine because, as you can see, with the Kenny Bell on top and... Uh, the good internals and everything, there's some money invested here that I don't want to respend. Um, so I went ahead and I tried to do a couple things on lower engine speed power shifts. I would go up to maybe 2,500, 3,000 RPM power shift it. And yeah, you're not going to you know, make any uh, track records doing that. But if you miss a gear, you're going to save yourself an engine. So if you're going to try uh, doing things with some of these shifters, I highly recommend uh, that mentality, but I'll tell you what, um, if you just want to save yourself a lot of time and hassle, I don't have one out of the car to show you. Um, I can show it to you in the car because it's an MGW. And I'm not getting paid by MGW. I'm just simply trying to tell you what I know. Uh, they don't even know this video exists. In this particular car, it has the retro shifter. Um, and I like the look of it, you know, especially having the, the first gen Camaro. Um, I received this fortunately as a gift from my very best buddy. And I put it in and I liked it and enjoyed it. 
Um, but there were some consequences I found of putting it in. You're going to hear a little bit more road noise. But if you're driving a Camaro and you're trying to have some fun with it, you're probably not too worried about that. But I also found some notchiness. And I, there's some things I was like, geez, I don't know. Maybe this was a bad choice. I love the shifter. I love everything about it. But I'm going to show you today how to fix all of those issues and really end up with a transmission that's going to last forever. Um, and you're going to enjoy driving. And we're going to talk about changing to a different fluid and an anti-venom mod too. Um, but first, I want to show you a different model of that MGW shifter. They have three options I'll be showing you here today too. Um, they have one that plugs in just like an OEM look. Um, that's not really what I wanted in this car. This particular one is the flat stick. Um, you can see their insignia here on the side of it. Went with the black ball. And for me with um, the suede red uh, custom interior, it really kind of set things off. I really was pleased with that flat stick. And they have a lot of different color options. I know they've got maybe a silver, a blue, and a black. Don't hold me to that, but you'll have to check out their website to see what they have currently in availability. So I really like that flat stick, um, but then I really like the retro. It really just kind of depends on what you're looking for. Um, and I wish I had one of these out of the car to show you, to say, hey, this is how it's different. Because uh, you really do have to do a little more work with the MGW. The whole housing assembly gets swapped out. You can see I've got three of them here um, from a couple different cars and shifters. But that's a good thing because with that other shifter, the MGW, um, these rubber bushings go away. The squashy bushing in the back here that just kind of moves around a little bit, especially under heavy load, um, goes away. Um, but I'd like to give you an additional tip. As you go to install the MGW, you do have to drop the cross member. Um, and you might be a little intimidated by that. It's not a big deal. Um, there is some room for the engine to drop and you don't really need a lift for it. In fact, I replaced both um, shifters, um, all these shifters, just here in the garage at the house. Um, it's convenient to have a lift, but then you got the car way up in the air too. And you're like, oh, I got to crawl up there and put this in it. So if you got some safety stands in the floor jack, you're good to go. But one tip that they're not going to necessarily share with you that I recommend is to have the hood open some uh, when you're doing that shifter swap because what's going to happen when you're jacking that transmission up um, and lowering it, the engine is going to change a little bit too. Um, I had a polyurethane insert I tried to put into an existing trans mount and to my surprise it actually raised the transmission slightly which hey no big deal right? Well there's a consequence for just about every action. Um, in fact there is right? And my consequence is that the front of this engine tilted forward about an well, eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch. And as it did so, as it tilted forward, my clearance on the hood then changed. And uh, it wasn't for the better because what happened was it actually caused a ding on the top side of my hood here. So you don't see the ding now because it's gone, but it did have to go to PDR to get it out because we have a custom paint job that that I don't really want to damage. I, I really enjoy driving this car. Is uh, Camaros are fun, obviously, or I wouldn't have uh, three of them. Anyways, uh, back to the shifter here. So, um, in regard to the MGW options and trying to show you what the shifter looks like when it's not in the vehicle, uh, you've got the flat stick option here. Um, you've got also uh, the uh, OEM shifter so you don't have to really change the look of it at all you can use that stock knob um, right onto that shifter and then over here uh, you've got the uh, the retro okay so the internals are all the same um, other than the exterior look and the key to this the reason why folks that i went with the mgw is because it's spring loaded yes so now you have positive engagement just like you did back in the good old days uh, you can hold your foot down if you're good at that power shifting and you can uh, go for that uh, third gear and you know you got it. You don't have to worry. Um, just like these older shifters that were spring loaded by Hurst, um, the newer shifters typically are not spring loaded unless you change the whole shifter assembly out. You're not going to get there. Okay, so it took me a, a little bit of time to learn that and figure that out. Um, but the, again, going back to the consequences, the MGW is great, but then fall time comes around and gosh, that notchiness, um, it can be fixed, believe it or not, for a trip to your Napa store, part number 704, 
um, 13 5, 7 at my local store anyways, and I picked up two copper washers. Okay, And what I did with the anti-venom mod, you can see some other videos online, the Tremec TR6060 Trans was installed in Camaros, Corvettes, uh, Corvettes Challengers uh, with Dodge, and also uh, Mustangs. So it went into a lot of vehicles, a lot of people running this transmission. And you're going to be able to see some other videos online that will show you how to install those washers. Some people will put one in, I put two in. And what we did, you're not going to see that right here, I'm just showing you the shifter again as I talked to you, but under the car there is a, a detent spring that you remove by just taking a bolt out essentially, putting a couple washers in, uh, and away you go. The Camaro is a little tougher though. Based on the floor pan, the design, uh, you can't really see what, you, what you're doing. You're going to have to get your socket up in there, and it's a sense of feel. It takes a little bit of uh, patience, but for me the notchiness went away. Okay, so that was a really inexpensive uh, fix with a shifter. The other thing is, is I got rid of fluid. So General Motors actually recommends this exact fluid for the Tremec TR6060. You can call Tremec and that's what they recommend, but I don't like it. I really prefer the Synchro Mesh. Um, I feel as though it does a much better job of lubricating. Um, keep in mind if you're going to, you know, go to the drag strip with your car, you still want to warm up that transmission uh, for at least five minutes before any kind of power shift would occur. Um, in that synchro mesh, I have noticed a difference with it. It, it, it definitely is shifter. Uh, the smooth, the smoothness of the shifter is better. Uh, it's smooth. It does what you want it to. Uh, the likelihood of it grinding is far less. So if you want a shifter that does not grind, MGW is a good answer. If you want a shifter that is spring loaded and will allow you to have a very positive engagement as you go from two to three. MGW is a great answer for that too. Um, it's not free. It's going to take a little bit of money to make it happen. So maybe you need to save up for a little bit. Um, but I'll tell you what, if I were you, I would not run out and buy some shifter just uh, to say, hey, I'm going to put that stick in. It's going to be a lot easier. I would take some time, save up some cash, leave that stock shifter in there. Okay. And when the time comes, um, you know the way to go there, okay? So I'm just trying to save you some time and hassle here. Uh, MGW does make great shifters for other vehicles too. Um, this has just been my experience, of course, with the 5th Gen Camaro. So hopefully that was helpful, folks. Saved you some hassle from buying things you didn't need and wasting money. Have a great afternoon.